So Abraham did have, he had two sons. Uh, one of those sons, Isaac, had a son named Jacob who had 12 sons. They ended up in Egypt and in slavery for 400 years. That's a long time. Yeah. yeah. That's... Then Moses showed up. God showed up. Rescued them. Miracles, Red Sea. We're kind of cliff noting here. The Bible says this in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. Then God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. That's the why right there. Who rescued you? I'm the Lord your God. Why? Because yeah. I rescued you. Yeah, that's right. You, he's a, all these amazing God things. God assumes the relationship from the very beginnings when right. he calls himself our God, when he says, I am your God. Right. He's starting with the relationship. Yeah. You, you might think, I certainly would have thought this, that he would have started with, if you do these things, I'll be your God. But he doesn't start there. He doesn't put an if in the beginning. He didn't do that with Abraham. And he's not doing that with uh, the children of Israel that are walking out following Moses. In fact, he's never, he, he doesn't do that. He's uh, the God who did something for us. Yeah. Never the God who wanted something from us. That's right. So if you think about it, the nation of Israel, just a few months before this moment, they're slaves. Been that way as long as anyone can remember. 400 years. 400 years, that's right. And then this guy shows up, Moses, who, who claims to be a messenger of God. Uh, and and he, then all of a sudden, nature just goes in your favor. Everything is going Every bad day. for Egypt and good for you. <laughs> Even even to the point that you walk through the Red Sea, you've been terrified for three months, no, no doubt. Absolutely. But on the other side of this, you are free. And here this God shows up and says, I'm your God. I'm the one who set, rescued you. I'm your God. And, and trust me. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of a big deal for people who've been in slavery for 400 years wondering, where is this God that Grandpa used to talk about? Right. Yeah. Trust me. That's true, because uh, for 400 years, they didn't have any new revelation, you know, all the way back to... I mean, God hadn't said anything verbally in a long time, I guess. Uh, no one had gotten a text or anything. Then he starts out, rule number one, with, you shall have no other gods before me. Now think about that. Right? Yeah. We, we've been slaves our whole <laughs> life, and you just saved us, and now you want us to be... Okay, yeah, that's right. be our God. That's right. That's, we're on board. Yes. Sounds like a good idea. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> The Ten Commandments were a confirmation of God's, and that's where it started, but all ten. They were a confirmation of God's relationship with Israel. Right. They weren't the condition. They weren't necessary. You've got to keep these, and then I'll see about keeping you around. No, no, no. That's God right. said it right up, uh, right up front. I am your God. Here's the commandment you keep because we are in relationship. Right. You're already in. You don't have to get in. You're already in. That's why there are rules. So let's talk about rules in our small groups. Um, talk about, maybe ask each other or share, have you ever made rules for someone else in your life? What was the purpose of those rules? Why would you do that? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Whether they're your kids or your neighbors or, or a work situation, wherever it is, right. have you made rules for someone else and why? Yeah. What's the purpose behind them? And what happens when the rules get broken? What, what happens to a relationship when the rules get broken? broken, ignored, uh, to just dispose of anything. I mean, yeah, that's, that's true. So it should be a good conversation, guys. We look forward to getting into it in our groups as well.